Jesus. Everybody ready to have church? Everybody else will be coming on in in the back. Praise the Lord. Let's everybody stand. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome our online family. Welcome you. Somebody say, God is good all the time. Praise the Lord, everybody. Everybody smile at me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. I'm not lost. I'm just waiting on y'all. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to sing this little chorus, but I want us to pray. The sun's coming up in the morning, and I feel like it's for somebody here. You know, I never know. You never know what you're battling. I don't know. I don't know where you've been through this week. But I know Jesus was on your side. I know Jesus was there because it's Christ in you. The hope of glory is whether I woke him up this week and allowed him to walk with me to help me with my situations. Thank you, Lord. We need to invite him in, wake him up, and say, Lord, I can just come to love on you just a little bit. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you as people begin to come into the house of the Lord. That we'll get our mind on you, Lord, and we'll keep our focus on you. But just even as Peter walked on the water, Lord, as long as he kept his focus on you, my God, he can walk on the water. We can do anything. But when he got his eyes off you, Lord, he began to sink. But Lord, you didn't let him perish. You reached down and pulled him right back up. I thank you this morning that we'll put our focus on you. No matter the situation, no matter the problem, you're bigger than any mountain and you're bigger than any problem. I thank you this morning for moving and meeting the needs of the people and needs of the church. I love you, Lord. I give you glory. I give you honor. I thank you because you are the great that I am. My God, you're the great I am. Lord, you're the way maker. You're the one that can make things happen when the enemy say, stop, when they can't happen. I'm thankful this morning for your presence in this place. I thank you for every person that's in this building. Help us to praise you, the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad there. Praise the Lord. They're coming to receive offering. Help me sing this little chorus. Praise the Lord. Song. Sing it with 
what you've been praying for, but somebody's on the brink of a miracle, but you got to hold on to the unchanging hand of God. you got to walk in the path that God's chosen you to walk. I feel God in this. The sun's coming up. You ain't going to have to cry about it no more, but the sun's coming up in the morning. My God's going to tell them a sun to the higher. My God's going to make a way where there don't seem to be a way. I don't know about anybody else in this place, but we need to lift our hands up and we need to thank Jesus that he woke us up this morning and he's turned us on our way and that we're in our right mind and that he dwells on the inside of me that I don't have to call him a million miles away but he said, Judy, I live on the inside of you and I woke you up this morning and I provide for you and I'm going to make a way. I love him. Somebody, somebody clap your hands and say thank you, Jesus. It's so fun.
God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God, our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? What could stand against? Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God, our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. Sing a little louder. 
little louder. Sing a 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 little louder in the presence of my enemies. Sing a little louder, louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder. My weapon is a melody. Sing a little louder. Heaven comes to fight for me. Sing a little louder in the presence. Sing a little louder, louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder, my weapon is a melody. Sing a little louder, heaven comes to fight for me. Sing a little louder, I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. In the middle of a storm, louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the King is alive. I always try to ask the Lord. What are you doing? What are you playing in with praise and worship? And when Judy said that she was going to sing the sun's coming up in the morning, I said, okay, I know where the people are when they come in. So we started with our God and we talked about how our God's greater, our God is stronger. And Judy was singing the sun's coming up in the morning. And in this song, and Raise a Hallelujah, it talks about up from the ashes, hope will, will arise. Somebody in here, the enemy's just pointing out all the ashes that are around you, saying, Look at all these ashes, look at everything that's just burnt and crumbled. But our God says that beauty rises from the ashes. And in this song, it talks about hope will arise out of the ashes. And somebody needs to know that the sun is coming up, that there is a God that is on your side that is fighting, and if God be for you, who can be against you? And that you can raise a hallelujah right there in the midst of your storm, and that God is going to come through with a vengeance against the enemy that comes against you. So it is time for hope to arise in this place. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what the funk is that people walked in with, but it's time to stir your spirit. It's time to remind yourself that if God be for you, really, who can be against you? And I would be afraid to be an enemy that would come against the people of God because God has, has got you. He is fighting on your behalf. He loves you. He is working things out according to his purpose. And I want you to give God a praise like you serve a God like that. I want you to give God a praise that says, you know what? Things might be going on and circumstances might be happening. But all I know is if it ain't good, God ain't done. And I'm going to praise God like it's already happened. And I'm going to praise right in the midst of the enemy. I'm going to praise God right in the midst of this trial. Sing a little louder. 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 Sing a 
that the bright and morning star would choose to light the way for my ever wandering heart. Not because of who I am, but because of what you've done. Not because of what I've done, but because of who you are. I am a flower quickly fading, here today and gone tomorrow. A wave tossed in the ocean, a vapor in the wind. Still you hear me when I'm calling, Lord, you catch me when told me who I am. I am yours. I am yours. Who am I that the eyes that see my sin would look on me with love? Watch me rise again. Who am I that the voice that calm the sea will call out through the rain and calm the storm in me? Not because of who I am, but because of what you've done. Not because of what I've done, but because of who you are. I am a flower quickly fading, here today and gone tomorrow. A wave tossed in the ocean, vapor in the wind. Still you hear me when I'm calling, Lord you catch me when
Monday night. John and Adam and I had a conversation about it. And so you, some of the rest of you know, but um, uh, I had a dream on a Monday night, and um, I was in a storm, <laughs> a tornado actually, and uh, I've been focused on that part, that part of being in the tornado, and just watching the devastation <laughs> happen around you. <laughs> but I got in a building <laughs> and I was safe in that building. <laughs> and the people who were with me were safe in the building. <laughs> and now there was still dev devastation. But that building was safe. That I was scared. But I've been focusing on that part, the, tor the tornado part. But today I'm going to focus on the fact that I was safe when it was over. And this is going to sound like a hallmark moment. But when I came out of the building, I, had, I couldn't find John. couldn't find him. And he's been the best friend I've ever had. <laughs> and I love him so deeply. So when I'm sitting in this building and I don't know where he is, <laughs> the chaos in my mind. And so I get out of the building and I see him standing up the street <laughs> and I just start running <laughs> and this is good <laughs> if you're not the savvy person I'm sorry but he just picked me up and we're just like spinning and he's like the weird worst Hallmark movie <laughs> the ending <laughs> and he's Said, and he just keeps saying it over and over and over again. Him, I was always there. I was always there. And that is my Jesus. He's always there in the storm. And so whatever storm is coming, because Sister Judy talked, that's what G Sister Judy was talking about this morning. You know, dreams and things that the Lord brings to you. And, so whatever storm is coming, I want that storm to know that I'm safe at the end of it. And everybody that was with me was safe at the end of it. And um, I'm not going to focus on the storm part, whatever that looks like. I'm going to focus on the building that can be safe. <laughs> through it all, through everything. And there was... Like, there was not even a brick, not even a piece of metal pulled back on that building. Everything around it was ashes. Everything around it was ashes. But the building that I was in was safe. And I did find my man after it was over with, so <laughs> that was my main concern. <laughs> um... Whatever you're going through this morning, because I can certainly feel it in the building, and I know I'm not the only one, whatever it is that you're going through, if you are building your rock on the firm foundation of Jesus Christ, he is going to keep your building safe, even if your mind is chaotic, even if, if there is literal destruction around you. He is going to keep you safe. And I just wanted to say that this morning. I love you. <laughs> We're just going to obey the Lord. And um, I don't know where it's going from here, but we're going to do another song. But during this song, can you just release all of your burdens to God? Anything that you walked in here carrying, just give it to him.
redemption by the grace in his eyes. If his grace is an ocean, we're all seeking. Heaven meets earth like an unforeseen kiss, and my heart turns violently inside of my chest. Don't have time to maintain these regrets when I think about the way. Oh, how he loves us all. Oh, how he loves us. How he loves us. the grace in his eyes if his grace is an ocean we're all seeking heaven meets earth like an unforeseen kiss and my heart turns violently inside of my chest I don't have time to maintain these regrets when I think about the way I want you to hold your hands up to the Lord. And whenever we get to the part that says, I don't have time to maintain these regrets, I want you to think about every regret that you've ever had, the thing that just keeps nagging you over and over in your mind, the thing that the enemy uses as a weapon against you to say, well, if you were a real Christian, you wouldn't do those things. Because that's what the enemy does. He is the accuser of the brethren. So those things that nag you, those things that keep you awake at night, I want you to hold your hands up to the Lord. And when we get to that point, I want you to just release it to God and be done with it forever and ever. Amen. And we are His portion and He is our prize. Drawn to redemption by the grace in His eyes. If His grace is an ocean, we're all seen. Thank you for grace. Heaven meets earth like an unforeseen kiss, and my heart turns violently inside of my chest. Here we go. I don't have time to maintain these regrets when I think about the way.
If you can, as Pastor John comes to bring the word. How I many is glad he loves you? Praise the Lord. Mm. Well, I, I got to say something this morning. Normally, normally, uh, at this point, what we would do is we would say, okay, well, the Lord had his way, but everything is just so tied in to what the Lord gave this morning. It's unbelievable how it all ties in. So I believe that the Lord has got something for us this morning. Praise the Lord. So how many how many how many want to receive from the Lord? Praise the Lord. Mm, my Lord, my Lord. Um if you got your Bibles, go to Luke chapter seven. Luke chapter seven. Mm, I promise I won't hold you long, but I will hold you right. Is that all right? Praise the Lord. Mm, we're just going to skip straight to the verses. Okay, Luke chapter 7, I'm going to start reading in verse number 36. Praise the Lord, it's going to be on the screens. The Bible says this, When one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. A woman in that town who lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house, so she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. As she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who's touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. Jesus answering him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people owed money to a certain money lender. One owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back, so he forgave the debts of both. Now, which one of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt forgiven. You have judged correctly, he said. Then he turned toward the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put, put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven little loves little. Then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. The other guests say among themselves, who is this who even forgives sin? Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for what you've already accomplished in your house. Lord, I thank you for your leadership and for your guidance today. Lord, move in this place today. Have your way in every heart and every life. And we're going to give you all the glory for what, we, what you're going to do in this place. We give you praise for it in Jesus' name. And the church said... Now, family, last week we started a series called Closer to Her, and we told you then that it is, it's in honor of the ladies, but it's not just for the ladies. So guys, don't tune me out, because today is going to be a very powerful day, because this morning what I want to talk to you about is this subject, and tell me that, tell me this ain't God, reckless love. Mm, reckless love. Now, church, most of us know that Jesus broke down the two greatest commandments when he said that we are to, number one, love the Lord our God with all of our heart, all of our mind, and all of our soul. And then, number two, we are to love our neighbor as ourselves. And as we jump in this morning, I already got to say something very powerful. See, the way I know you love me is how you love God is how you love me. 
Oh, I don't know if you got that the way you should have. The way I can tell how much you value God is how you treat me. The Bible tells in 1 Corinthians 13 that even if I speak in tongues, even if I prophesy, even if I preach the word, if I ain't got love, then I'm like a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. Oh, come on, church. In other words, God ain't as concerned about your gifts as he is your fruit. I know you can sing. I know you can play the instrument. I know you can teach. I know you can preach. I know you speak in tongues and run all over the church. But your gifts ain't no good without your fruit. Mm, and the Lord, oh, come on, church. The Lord will know us as believers not by how gifted we are, but how fruitful we are. Oh, John 13, 35, Jesus said, by this, by this, all, everybody know you, my disciples, if you love one another. Don't tell me how much you love Jesus and you treat your wife like garbage. Don't tell me how you a good a Christian you are, then you spread gossip and sow discord. Don't tell me how sanctified you are and shout about heaven on Sunday and act like hell all week long. Oh, where is the love? Oh, there's so many videos, so many seminars, and so many books about why the number of Christians are declining and why churches are dying and why nobody wants to go to church anymore. But I'm going to give you a personal theory of my own. I'm going to give you something from the AIV, the Anders International Version. I mean, I ain't no scientist or nothing, but it just seems to me that some churches ain't growing and some Christians are, and Christianity is declining because people don't see the difference between where they are and where they are. Oh, don't shout me down. Now when I'm preaching good this morning. Oh, the modern church of the day has created an atmosphere of condemnation, criticism, and judgment. Oh, don't you come in here smelling like that. Oh, I can't believe they had the nerve and the audacity to come up in here. Oh, well, we need to pray for so-and-so. I heard stop. Just stop. Well, if your Jesus lets you do this or do that, then you got the wrong Jesus. Well, let me tell you something, honey. If your Jesus lets you point fingers and condemn others while you make five trips up to the buffet bar, you got the wrong Jesus too. Because your Jesus lets you pick and choose who gets sent to hell and why they get sent there. And I ain't sure which Jesus you got, but it sure enough ain't the Jesus of the Bible that I read. Because this same Jesus who died for me is the same Jesus who died for them. And the ground is level at the foot of the cross. Our job, our mission, and our privilege is to show and to share. Not the condemnation of the denomination. Not the judgment of what we've always been taught. Not I'm so holy I glow in the dark. No, it's my job and my privilege to tell you and everybody else that Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Oh, he loves the little children all the children of the Lord uh, see he said if I be lifted up not your conviction if I be lifted up not what the denomination taught you if I be lifted up somebody help me Jesus said if I be lifted up I will I will I will draw all men to me so I don't know about everybody else, but I made up my mind. I ain't gonna, I'm going to lift him up and I'm going to let him do the drawing. Because my way, it just don't work. Oh, I still got family. I still got co-workers. I still got friends that's lost. We still got a world that's lost. So all that criticizing, condemning, and finger pointing, it ain't working. All those posts, all they did was stir up some more of the same judgmental hypocrisy. Oh, you ever notice? Oh, I got to go on a tangent here. Is that all right? Can I jump on a soapbox real quick? You ever notice that all the amens and the agreements only come from those who share the same views? I have yet to see one of them where somebody said, oh, I'm glad you put that up there I bowed down and gave my heart to Jesus I bowed down and I just got saved right there now don't get it twisted I believe we all live right I believe we all live biblically I believe we all preach the word, but people will be reached more because of my example, more so than my words. And I believe people are looking for something, but what they're looking for is something different, not what they've always heard, not what they've always seen. Where is the fruit? Because, <sighs> see, my ideas ain't got the same impact as his plan. So I'm going to lift him up, and I'm going to let him do the drawing, and let him do the cleaning. By this shall all men know that you're my disciples if you love one another. See, the Bible tells us in Galatians 5 that the fruit of the Spirit 
is love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, temperance, and self-control. Against such there is no law. And God don't want us to just use our gifts, but he wants us to manifest our fruit. I don't care how much you can shout. I don't care how much you can run the aisles. I don't care how rich you are. I don't care how poor you are. I don't care how many songs you know all the words to. I don't care if you know the fourth verse to Amazing Grace. I don't care how many Bible verses you can quote. I don't care what your title is. I don't care what your position is. I don't care what you do in your church. What I want to know is, where's the fruit? I want to know how you treat people in traffic when they cut you off. I want to know how you treat that waitress at the restaurant after church. I want to know how you treat those who ain't as fortunate as you. I want to know how you speak to those who ain't got nothing to give you. I want to know how you love people on Monday morning at the job. I want to know how you love people outside this building. I want to know where's the fruit. Because, see, I believe that the world's going to be reached. But I also believe the world's going to be reached not because we got gifted people, but because the world's going to be reached because we got fruitful people. Oh, somebody help me today. <laughs> that we not only talk about the love of God wherever we go, but we demonstrate the love of God wherever we go. So see, I believe that one of the challenges that God's called us to is not just to love him, but to love people. See, if I asked right now, if I said, okay, everybody in here that loves God, lift your hand. Every hand going to go up. Right? I hope. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> so my point is this. Our problem ain't loving God. It's loving the people of God. And the fact is, <laughs> oh, some of y'all going to get a face pop into your head, but some people make it difficult to love them. <laughs> don't look to the side, anybody. I'm just giving you some good godly advice here. Just don't look beside of you. Don't even look across your aisle. But some people make it difficult to love them. Am I talking to anybody? I'm talking about that person who cuts you off in traffic. I'm talking about those heathen co-workers. I'm talking about those hard-to-deal-with family members. I'm talking about those people on the other end of customer service phone calls. The people who, don't, when your phone rings, you look at your phone and you go, Oh, my Lord, not them. That's who I'm talking about. See, it's easy to love God. We sing about how great is our God. We sing about a good, good Father. Oh, we worship our God. And we worship that our God is greater. Our God is stronger. We shout about, let me tell you about my Jesus. So who wouldn't love a God like that? Who wouldn't love a God who woke you up this morning? Who wouldn't love a God that started you on your way? A God that got you here safely. A God that protected you. A God that protected your kids this week. Oh, is anybody going to help me this morning? Anybody grateful for a God like that? I'm talking about a God that puts shoes on your feet, clothes on your back, food on your table. Who wouldn't love a God like that? <laughs> so the issue is not, do I love God? The issue sometimes is that I don't love either number one myself or number two other people. And it's hard for you to love people when you don't love yourself. And that's why every now and again, you need to take a good hard look in the mirror and remind yourself of the goodness of God. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am the apple of his eye. I am the head, not the tail. I am the lender, not the borrower. I am blessed and highly favored. I am above only and not beneath. I am his workmanship. I am created for his good works. So if ain't nobody else going to shout for me, I'll shout for myself. If ain't nobody else going to shout with me, I'll shout for my wife myself. Because when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries hallelujah. And if you think I'm going to come in his house and be quiet about how good my God's been to me, you got another thing coming. Because I will, I will, I will praise my God. Come on, somebody, give him some praise. Ah. Because when I think about and I look back over my life and I look back at where the Lord's brought me from, I got to praise him. See, I'm a survivor. When everybody else gave up on me, he didn't. When everybody else said that boy ain't never going to amount to nothing, he didn't. When everybody else gave up, he never did. So we are to love people. And we are to love God. 
And one of the ways that God loves us is God loves us recklessly. Oh, my. Oh, my. If I ain't preaching to anybody else this morning, I'm going to preach to myself. He keeps opening doors for us, even when we close them after he opens them. He, he keeps making ways for us, even when we get ourselves blocked in. He keeps breaking chains, even when we get ourselves locked up. He keeps intervening, even when we jump right back in where he left us. He never gives up on us. And most of us know how love can sometimes get messy. See, anybody can love you after you got it going on. <laughs> but can they love you in your mess? See, watch this. Romans 5, 8 said, but God demonstrates, love that word, demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Oh, I'm about to get in trouble. Oh, I'm about to get kicked out of most major denominations here. But while we were still in the club, <laughs> while we was out there doing our own thing, while we were still smoking, popping, sniffing, shooting, and drinking, oh, come on and preach, Pastor John. Go ahead and preach for a little bit. While we was closing down the bar, while we was still in our mess, while we was doing that, while we was going there, while we was with them, God demonstrated his love for us. Why? While we were still sinners, Christ died for you. Oh, where's my church at? If you can't shout because he died for me when you was in your mess, something wrong with your shouter. He died for me. He died for me. He died for me. If you ever get to the point where you can't shout across the cross, you done went too far because Jesus paid it all. He bought me when I wasn't worth nothing. He paid everything for somebody worth nothing. And if I don't come into his house, and give him some praise something wrong with me I gotta praise him <sighs> see in other words he didn't wait for me to get it together to love me <laughs> he didn't wait for you to get that job <laughs> he didn't wait for you to straighten this out or straighten that out he didn't wait for you to fix this or fix that he didn't wait for you to stop this or stop that it ain't for the bank account. It ain't for the stuff he gave you. But I want this next shout to be because uh, you grateful. God loved me in spite of me. Somebody take a few seconds and give me some praise. Not because of me, but in spite of me. Oh, come on, somebody. Act like you grateful. At least act like you thankful. Oh, come on now. Look at your neighbor and say, excuse me. You might get nervous. You might get uncomfortable. But this shout is because he chose to love me in spite of me. God loves me recklessly somebody give him some praise ha ah. ha he loves me recklessly, so I'm going to praise him recklessly. Oh, I'm just trying to see who got a testimony, who been delivered from the most, who he pulled the furthest out, because that's where you're going to find the true praiser. They standing right outside the deepest pit, and they looking back, and he said, yep, that's where I used to be. Yep, that's who I used to be. Yep, that's where I used to go. Yep, that's what I used to do, but he saved me. He loves me in spite of me. I am not who I used to be. Because his grace is sufficient. Ah. And just like he loves us, he wants us to love other people that way. See, that's one of the reasons why I love this passage so much. And I'm so, so, so passionate about this, about this passage and about this story in the Bible. It's one of my favorite passages to teach and preach because it introduces us to a woman who understands the power of reckless love. See, it introduces us to a woman who's crazy about loving Jesus. Uh, it introduces us to a woman who knows how to crash a party. <laughs> So let's unpack it this morning. So we got this dinner party and it's at a man named Simon's house and has, he's a Pharisee. And there's several other guests at this party, including Jesus, but there's several other guests. And there's a woman who lived in the town who heard that Jesus was at Simon's house. And she comes with this jar of perfume. And we don't see her name, but we do see what she did. The Bible says she was a sinner. <laughs> 
that she lived a sinful life. They don't even mention her name. They don't mention her family. They just say she a sinner. They don't mention her. they don't mention nothing else about her. They just say, hey, she a sinner. Now, ain't it funny how people will judge you based on what you were and not who you are? <laughs> you got to be careful about the people who talk about what you were, but they don't even know who you are. Oh, that's a word for somebody today. They know enough to talk about you, but they don't know you enough to talk to you. All right. Got to move on. So here we are at this dinner party. <clears throat> and Jesus is reclining at the table. The Bible says he's there. While he's there, this woman shows up. Now, most scholars believe this woman was a prostitute. And everybody knows her stuff. I asked one thing. To be a private sinner. <laughs> but it's another thing when everybody knows your stuff. But I got to tell some people this morning that I believe that the reason why God let them see you get crucified in public, the reason why he let them see your shame and he let them see your pain, he let them see your hurt, is because some of it, some of us even said, why, Lord, why did this happen? Why did that happen? But it's called he about to, he about to make them watch your resurrection. <laughs> the same ones who watched you die on Friday are the same ones going to have to watch you come out on early Sunday morning. He's preparing a table for you in the presence of your enemies. He's anointed your head with oil and your cup about to run over. Not in public. Hey, not where nobody can see it, but he's about to do it so the world can see the power of his resurrection. All right, so the woman shows up. She crashes the party. She rolls up in there and she gets down on the floor. She wasn't trying to be cute. She wasn't trying to be pretty. She didn't care what Simon thought. She wasn't worried about what Nicodemus thought. She wasn't even worried about what Peter, James, or John thought. She came to give her Jesus some praise. Oh, can I tell you that God's looking for some people who ain't worried about what nobody thinks? They ain't worried about what the crowd, the Pharisees, or the disciples think. They just want to give him some praise. They don't care what people think if they start shouting. They don't care what the Peter pointing Pharisees are saying behind their back. They still going to dance. They don't care what everybody else is doing. You go ahead and you just slip one hand and say, oh, praise the Lord. But you go ahead and do that. But I'm going to give him some praise with some reckless abandon. Does anybody have a testimony here that'll say, Oh, he healed my body. I got to shout. He touched my mind. I got to give me some praise. He saved me. It was just in time. Oh, is anybody going to help me praise him this morning? I didn't come to be cute. I didn't come to look pretty. I came to church to tell the Lord, you've been so good to me. If I got to crawl on the floor, that's what I'll do. If I got to climb a ladder, that's what I'll do. If I got to tear the roof off, that's what I'll do. If I got to crawl by myself, I'll crawl by myself. If I got to shout by myself, I'll shout by myself because I know what he did for me. And if you want to sit there and be cute, you go right ahead. Act like he he ain't done nothing for you. But he been too good to me for me not to praise him. He been too good to me for me to be quiet about it. Oh, I get it. I get it. I get it. I hear them other voices. I hear I hear voices saying, Well, Brother John, it don't take all that. Well, well, you're right, it don't take all that, but he didn't have to do all that either. But he did, but he did, but he did, and I got to thank him for it. I got to thank the Lord for what he did for me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I came to give him some reckless praise. I came to crash the party. Huh. So she crashes the party. She lets her hair down, and she starts loving on Jesus. We get into a part I ain't never seen before. The Bible says in Luke 7, 38, as she stood behind him at his feet whipping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. This brings me to my first point. Don't worry, it ain't many points. And that is this. Number one, reckless love is costly. It's costly. They some people who settle for some cheap kind of love. <laughs> but reckless love is costly. 
So while Jesus is reclining at the table, she poured a jar of perfume mixed with her tears over his feet. And John says because of what she did, the whole house was filled with the smell of the perfume. <laughs> now, if you know the story, you know this wasn't some cheap perfume. This wasn't that 99 cent spray. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> this perfume that she used was an entire year's salary. It took her a year for her to get what she had in her hand. She might have been saving for a new car. She might have been saving for a down payment on a house. Maybe it was her kid's college fund. Maybe she was saving it for a vacation. But it was an entire salary in it. But when she got in the presence of Jesus, and she saw Jesus, and she knew how Jesus had been so good to her, she said, I got to give him something. She said, I got to do something. He has shown me reckless love, so I'm going to show him reckless love. And reckless love is costly. Sometimes reckless love is going to cost you time. Reckless love means taking the time to pay attention to me. So that means I sometimes got to get up and go when I don't want to give it up and go. Even when it's raining, I got to get up and go. Even when it's my only day off, I got to get up and go. See, that means sometimes I got to do when I don't feel like doing, even when I don't feel like it, even when I'm tired. Reckless love is costly. <laughs> and not only she not only gave me some attention, she gave me some affection. So I don't care how I feel, I'm going to love on Jesus. I don't care what it looks like, I'm going to worship him. I don't care what everybody else thinks, I'm going to praise Jesus. If everything else is bad, he's still good, so I'm going to show him some affection. See, she got in the presence of Jesus. She didn't care what people thought. She didn't care what it looked like. She put her hair between the toes of Jesus. Mm, I don't think we really get what that means. Because some of y'all ain't got this face. <laughs> she got her hair between the toes of Jesus. See, Jesus wasn't wearing Nikes. He wasn't wearing the latest Hey Dudes or the latest Jordans. Jesus was wearing sandals. And the streets he just come off of, they wasn't nice and paved. They was dirt. And they were nasty. It's the same streets the animals walked on. And the new didn't have a public restroom they used. They used the street. That's the streets that Jesus came walking in off of. So on the way to Simon's house, Jesus was walking on some pretty nasty streets. And the Bible says that Simon didn't wash his feet. But the woman didn't care if his feet was dirty because she knew that he had made her clean. <laughs> and when you love him, it don't matter. <laughs> See, she washes his feet with her tears and she dries them with her hair. So she gave him attention and affection. But then watch what the Bible says in verse 39. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man was a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of woman she is. That she is a sinner. So Simon says to himself, and the greatest lie you can ever tell is the one to yourself. But <laughs> Another message, another time. But what he says within himself, <laughs> that if he would have known who it was and what it is that touched him, <laughs> that brings me to point two. Reckless love will sometimes bring criticism. Your love choice might make you a target. It might get you bounced off social media. It might make people unfollow you. It might make you change your friend groups. It might get you left alone at the family gathering. Your love choice will sometimes bring criticism. Simon said within himself, if Jesus was a prophet, he would have known who and what. Oh, can we stop right here for just a second? All right, number one. We can all agree that Jesus is a prophet, right? All right, and number two, we know that Simon ain't. Right? All right, so if Simon ain't a prophet, <laughs> how she know what she is? All right, some of us missed it. 
So Jesus is a prophet, right? And Simon ain't. So let me ask you a question. How does she know where Simon lives? Oh, we're getting there, ain't we? And how does she know the layout of his house so good that she can go straight to where the guest of honor is seated? Inquiring minds want to know. Hmm, maybe she done been there before. <laughs> Cause she ain't on the guest list. She ain't got an invitation, but she got to his house. And she got to where Jesus was without direction. <laughs> Cause maybe she done been there before. And see, I saw something I'd never seen in this story. Simon didn't say anything about her being at his house. Or even being in the room while her hair was up. But as soon as she took her hair down, because she had to take her hair down to dry his feet. The Bible said when she started wiping his feet with her hair, he knew who she was. That's when he recognized her. All right, let me share the principle. The people who tell you about your business are the ones who know about it. Cause whatever they're judging you about, and most of the time, the same stuff they got going on. Because the only way you know what that is is if you know firsthand what that is. Oh, can I push it here? Can I push it a little bit? Oh, the only reason why you can know that Instagram and Snapchat full of half-naked people is because it's an algorithm that brings up what you've been looking at. The only way you know what that looks like is because you've seen that before. The only way you know what that smells like is because you smelled that before. The only way you know what that does is because you felt that before. The only way you know what pride looks like, the only way you know what envy, jealousy, and slander looks like. <laughs> so how does Simon know who she is? How do you know my stuff unless you're in the same stuff? How does Simon know who she is and what she does? And how does she know where Simon lives? But Simon said if Jesus was a prophet, he would know who and what. And reckless love will bring criticism. So reckless love's costly. Reckless love will bring criticism. And there's way too many people who's worried about what somebody else is going to think. What if they talk about me? If they're going to talk about you if you praise him, they're going to talk about you if you don't. So you might as well just go ahead and praise him anyway. Oh, what if they don't hang out with me anymore? Well, if they ain't going to hang out with you because you praise your God, they ain't your kind of people anyway. So praise him anyway. See, the Lord been too good to me for me not to praise him. I know where he's brought me from. I know what he pulled me out of. I know what pit I was in. I know where I used to be. And when I think about everything he's done for me, my soul cries hallelujah. My hands get lifted up. My feet start moving. And my mouth got to bring forth some praise because I don't know about anybody else, but he's been mighty good to me. I can't just sit there and look pretty. I got, I've been through too much. The devil is a liar. I've been through too many storms. I've seen too many miracles. I'm sitting beside a miracle right now. I'm standing up in front of a miracle right now oh my lord I am a miracle oh he's been too good to me so you can criticize if you want you can laugh if you want oh maybe I'm the only one with a testimony but when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me I gotta praise him so watch this the Bible says Simon said within himself that if Jesus knew what kind of woman that she was he wouldn't let her do what she did. And then Jesus read Simon's mail. He knew what Simon was thinking. The Bible says that Jesus even turned toward the woman and said, Hey, Simon, you see her? Ever since I came in your house, you ain't washed my feet, but she did. Ever since I came to your house, you ain't anointed my head, but she did. Simon, you ain't celebrated me in any way. You simply tolerated me. But this woman hadn't stopped kissing my feet. But then he quits talking to Simon. And he starts talking to her. 
Jesus looks at her and he gives her a word. Number one, reckless love is costly. Number two, reckless love will bring criticism. And finally, number three, reckless love will heal you. See, Simon saw the woman as a sinner because he'd been looking at her through his eyes. All he saw was a sinful woman. All he saw was a woman who lived a sinful life. But Jesus wants us to see people through his eyes. And when we see people through his eyes, we'll see them in a totally different light. When we see people through the eyes of God, we stop looking at them as wretched, sinful creatures, and we start seeing them as people in need of a Savior. When we see, start seeing them as people in need of the same Jesus I need, in need of the same blood I need, when we look through the eyes of God, we see that the ground's level at the foot of the cross. And it don't matter what you look like, what you smell like, what you're wearing, what you've done, where you've been, or who you've been with, Jesus loves you. Come on, musicians. We start looking at people through the eyes of Jesus. We start looking at them with love and not judgment. Love and not, I'm better than you. Love and not, I'm above you. Love and not, you get away from me. When we start looking at people through the eyes of Jesus, we start looking at them with reckless love. Love that says, I love you not because of, but in spite of. But see, there's another side to this too that we got to look at, church. It ain't just others we need to look at through the eyes of Jesus. We got to learn how to look at that person in the mirror with the eyes of Jesus too. When we see ourselves through his eyes, we see ourselves as the head and not the tail. Above only and not beneath. The lender, not the borrower. The apple of his eye. We see ourselves as his child and heir and a joint heir. So here's what the Lord laid on my heart for this morning, and here's where I told you at the beginning, I wasn't going to hold you long, but it all ties in here. I want us to stand, and here's what I'm going to do, what I believe the Lord would have us do. What I want to do is I want us to create some space. I want us to create some space to celebrate this reckless love of God. See, I believe there's people in this room who's been looking at themselves through the eyes of others and not the eyes of Jesus. And this morning is a shift. It's a shift in the way we see others and in the way we see ourselves. In just a minute, I'm going to open the altar and I'm going to invite you to find a space, whether it be at the altar, whether it be in your seat, whether it be walking up the pews, whatever it might be. But the important thing is I want everybody to find a space. And when we get in our space, I want us to close our eyes. And I want us to take a fresh look at ourselves. Through the eyes of Jesus, there's people in here battling depression. There's people in here battling anxiety and worry. There's people in here battling self-esteem issues. There's people in here battling thoughts you never thought you'd think. Battling less than, battling not enough. This can be a very powerful moment. It's a shifting point. So right now, I want to invite you to find your space. If it's at the altar, it's at the altar. This altar's open. If you want to gather around the altar, that's fine. Everybody, go now. Find your place, wherever it is. Whatever it is, find it quickly. Don't let the enemy talk you out of it. Don't let the enemy tell you to stay right here and don't do a thing. Find your space. You get there. And when you get there, close your, close your eyes. Some might be saying, how can you find it? How can I look through myself through the eyes of Jesus? Dwell on what he says about you. Not what he said about you. Not what she said. Not what they say. Or not even what I say about me. What does he say? He says he loves you with an everlasting love. He says you're the apple of his eye. He says he loves you unconditionally. He says he loves you with a reckless love. So can we take a few minutes and just worship him? He loves us recklessly.